I was going to say also, as you look at the topics, uh, can we throw in the piece that was in the final call newspaper uh, this week also? Uh, and we encourage everybody to get a copy of the final call every week from our brothers. But this uh, issue was regarding the HBCU, the historically black uh, colleges and universities, and how despite the many years of underfunding, we still got to fight for funding on that, even as, as you mentioned, we're trying to get uh, uh, the Democratic uh, administration to put some money into the black press. So we're, we're catching it all over the place, brother. So if we could throw well, that well, on the table, too. Yeah, well, let's, let's start there, brother, brother James. Let's start there. So yes, this is sir, a piece well, of our sister. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that last week we had our wonderful sister Anissa on, who is an excellent writer. And uh, she's back again with a, a great story about how in ten, uh, Tennessee and really all over the country, uh, black colleges are under attack. But uh, Tennessee State in particular, uh, the governor, um, uh, I guess, disbanded their board. And mm-hmm. uh, he's going to uh, appoint his own board. And we know it's in the Republican administration. And not that that makes that much difference in terms of how we're still going to suffer. But. He's uh, appointing uh, his people, and and ultimately, I guess the word is they really they really after that land that uh, Tennessee State mm. sits on. But Tennessee State, as well as these other black historically black colleges around the country, are suffering because of the underfunding that they have experienced over so many years. Uh, in, in in the cases of into the millions and uh, maybe even uh, billions of dollars. Uh, it says, I'm just looking at our story, North Carolina AT&T University received $2 billion less than the White College, North Carolina State University. And Florida uh, A&M, which is a historically black college, which my daughter graduated from, by the way. We All right, now. Uh, oh, okay. yes, sir. <laughs> yes, she's a rapper. Almost $2 billion less than the University of Florida. So we talk about billions of dollars of underfunding. And then right. when these colleges' presidents and their boards approach the state for more money, they point to deficiencies in their uh, actions and in their, you know, and whatever they, whatever they need money for, they don't get it. And so when they go begging for money, they, the, uh, the, the voices in power say, well, you can't do, you haven't done this, you haven't done that. And that's because they don't get no money. And so it's like a vicious right. circle that our uh, institutions of higher education, which turns out more uh, black graduates than uh, most of these uh, white colleges around. And, and uh, you know, so the spiral is going downward. And, uh, and this is a case that uh, Sister Anissa highlighted, but she threw in a, a bunch of other uh, uh, universities as well into the piece. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, looking at the story. That. Go ahead, Brother BJ. No, I was, I was just going to throw in real quick. Funny you mentioned that because I got a call from a brother today about St. Augs College in Raleigh, and they uh, got a $7.9 million tax lien of mm. uh, unpaid debts mm. and accreditation risk. And I'm telling you, what's been going on in North Carolina is that some of these, you know, these colleges sit on some prime real estate exactly. right downtown on the edge of downtown, and it's exactly. like a land grab. Exactly. Yeah, so they're they trying to take our stuff from us, brother. Yeah, you know, I'm looking at Sister Nisa's uh, piece, and she writes that this, um, the the governor disbanding the, the the Tennessee State's Board of Trustees and installing a new board, that right. the move came as a result of several audits, but auditors didn't find any evidence of fraud, no, malfeasance fraud. by executive leadership, the university, or the TSU Foundation. Right. Oh. And, 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 and they still, did. Go ahead. And they didn't raise the issue until Tennessee State came asking for more money. That's when yeah. they when they when they raised this whole issue. Yeah. So then, of course, so now you get audited. They don't really find anything. Right. But then when you say, "Hey, you owe us some money over here. You need to give it to us," now you you start asking questions. Well, what about mishandling of financing, housing, scholarships? Well, if those were issues. Why didn't the auditors come up with these issues when they looked into these things? Because I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, when they audit, I don't know about when they audit nobody else. But when they audit black institutions and historically black colleges and universities, trust and believe, 
is a thorough, thorough, full <laughs> examination. This is something we've been fighting. You know, I, I was going to go and, gradu- and, and graduate from Morgan State in, in, in the 80s, man, and we were fighting <laughs> this all the way from the 60s in terms of underfunding of Morgan State University. Brother, At a certain uh, point. Not- yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Yeah. So at a at a certain point, the state of Maryland admitted to underfunding mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. admitted that programs have been placed at a white university to compete with Morgan State. So there was supposed to be now uh, this influx of resources to make up for the past wrongdoing. I don't know how much of that is, was not, was done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's interesting because when I first joined the final call, when I came to Chicago, now that was in 86, but in the late 80s, that was one of the first stories of Brother Wally, may Allah be pleased with our wonderful brother, asked me to look into and to, you know, to research what the historically black colleges and how they were suffering because of low funding. This is back when I first came up, man. So this has been going on for a very long time, man. I see in Sister's article, she writes that um, in September 2023, the U.S. Secretary of Education and Agriculture sent a joint letter to 16 governors, the governors of Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, Missouri, North Carolina, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, Virginia, and West Virginia, urging them to provide equitable funding for the HBCU land grant institutions in their state. I mean, can't the president and his, and his administration do more than just hmm. send a joint letter? Right. You mean to tell me yeah, you right. can't say to the governors of these states, hey, we may have to look at somehow curbing the the funding that we send to your state if you don't deal with this issue. Now, I know that, that Mr. Biden, uh, they talked about, I forget how much money they say he's given to black colleges and universities. Mm-hmm. But if the schools are being taken over, how is this helping? Oh, that, See, this is what I'm talking right. about, brothers and sisters. Yeah. When, where is the assistance from Mr. Biden who said, we, he got our back, who said when he won election that black folks saved democracy. Where is what he will do? I mean, even raising this as, a, as an important issue from the bully pulpit at the White House, maybe visiting some of these universities, saying, hey, these are pre- treasured institutions. Well, brothers and sisters, we can't just sit around being happy we got black faces in high places and not demand a damn thing. Yeah, and another right. reason, okay. uh, not only the land that it sits on, but they they infiltrating too, like white students mm-hmm. are more and more yeah. going to the historically black colleges because the education is good, but it's not as much money that they have to spend right. to get the education. So not only the land, but in order for their children to get a quality education at a lower price. And so, you know... Um, you know, and and to your point too, uh, we got to talk about the black press because it's a similar situation where funding the the black. To your point that you mentioned uh, maybe last week or a week or two ago, brother Naba. I mean, black people mm. put Mr. Biden in office. I mean, absolutely, it was the black women, black people that put him in office, and and it is a slap in the face to not yes. respond to the black press in a significant way to fund some of these black papers is really disrespectful. And it shows the amount of uh, respect that he has for our, the black publishers. And he probably feels he doesn't even need them, you know? Yeah. I mean, bro, what, you what, know, what, brother that's true or not? Yeah. You know, you know, the other thing is now in the middle, check this out in the middle of all this talk, about losing black voters now. Yeah. The mo the most monolithic group I heard a guy I heard a guy say and I agree with it. 
the most monolithic voting group really in the history of this country. Yeah. Right. We've been right there with the Democrats. Right? <clears throat> so how is it then that they are about to spend roughly uh, about a billion dollars this election? Man? Would it be? But you can't right. give $25 million, $50 million to the to the black press? And these are people that are definitely pro-Biden. That right. I, know they, I know they're nonpartisan, but they they're definitely for? pro-Biden. That, is that what they're asking for? Fifty million? That ain't nothing, man. No, no. That's, I'm, I'm just saying, just oh. just as a basic thing, if you're getting a, a, a billion dollars and you can't get these people like fifty million, twenty, I mean, just to tell them, just go ahead, man. So, so how you know? So how is your friend? I put that in in parentheses. How right. is your friend, Mr. Biden, and the Democrats? But they don't, they don't break, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my fault. According to insider intelligence, campaigns will spend $12 billion, that's, that's uh, presidential and others, on advertising during this election cycle. $12 billion, okay. which they say is a new record. Okay. But it ain't mm-hmm. going to black folk. So here we go mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. Here we go well, again. Our, our good friends. Yeah. So they may say, well... If, if we don't put Biden in, though, it's going to be even worse with Trump. And you know Trump ain't right. going to give us nothing. You know, maybe Biden will give us a little bit when he get in again, even though he ain't giving it to us now. Yeah, well, mm. well, I, I tell you, bro, um, we can keep waiting for a white political messiah if we want to. Yeah. If we want to. But at the end of the day, I'm saying, and I'm I'm not going to get off these two points because I feel that they are very indicative of what we're dealing with. Remember, at a certain point, Mr. Biden had the White House. He had the House and he had the Senate. But they could not pass the uh, uh, George Floyd Police Reform Act at the federal level. They could not pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Act at the federal level. And now we got black people being deprived of voting and voting rights all across the country because they let Joe Manchin out of West Virginia and Kristen Sinema out of Arizona in the Senate, basically. They let them dominate. Manchin is not even in. He he didn't retire now. And Sinema ain't running again. Right. You hear, you hear me? So, so they were so, so, so concerned. Biden and his crew were so concerned about preserving Joe Manchin that they let him do whatever he wanted. Hey, brother, Nava, Nava. Mm. See, you're trying to say is that that are you saying that Biden ain't like Trump because Trump will go in there and take his belt off and start whipping folks to make them get in line. <laughs> Brother, that's what, they don't get in line. He'll turn the whole caucus against them. Brother, <laughs> what, 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 what kind of president are you? If you say that this loyal group of voters back to save democracy, which is much bigger than yeah, black folks, yeah. literally save yeah. them. This is what they said. I'm not saying this. I'm not saying this. Mm-hmm. This is what they said. The yeah, black exactly. folks, the black vote saved democracy because brothers and sisters remember this when you're looking at these presidential elections. It's not the popular vote that counts. No, it's the electoral. So you can lose you can lose the popular vote and still become president if you win the electoral college vote, which mm-hmm. is a certain number of votes apportioned to every state. I.e. Clinton, I.e. Clinton Trump. Come on, man. Right. So, so, right. so, 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 if you don't, so what we got to understand is, this is why the black vote becomes important in places like Michigan, in places like mm-hmm. Pennsylvania, in places yep. like Wisconsin, in places yeah. like Georgia, because it may come down to 45,000 votes in terms of whether that state will flip one way or the other. 
So, so for us Just to be it. continually begging and, mm-hmm. and wondering what's, what's, what's going to happen from our quote unquote friend, Mr. Biden, but yet some people are talking about they don't understand why black folks are not enthusiastic, enthusiastic about Biden. You don't have to be pro Trump to be not wanting Biden. Stop the foolishness, man. <laughs> don't nobody.